air back back at you with another edition of gen sports corner for monday november 21st 2022 you know we have monday night football tonight i believe between the cardinals and the 49ers but we're going to talk about that epic game yesterday uh eagles when they were out in indianapolis they pulled off the improbable and they came out and got the dub man a very up and down game At one point we looked like mr jekyll uh dr jekyll another point we looked like mr hyde but somehow some way they were able to keep the ship steady and get that win so let's go ahead and look at some of the stats for the game the good the bad the ugly so you look at the the, the team side by side same amount of first downs 18 for the eagles 14 for the colts uh one thing that stuck out to me for the eagles is the not the passing yards because that was pretty similar for both teams but the rushing yards and some of the, the key acquisitions that we talked about earlier in the week that played a big role in the disparity in the rushing game between between the two teams. The Eagles had 141 yards on 33 attempts for 4.3 yards per rush. But the Colts, they, they had 99 yards on 26 carries for 3.8 yards per carry. And a lot of those yards came on that first drive. They marched right down the field, put the ball in the end zone. Uh, Jonathan Taylor did his thing, looked like he was going to have a big game, and then that was it for their entire offense. Not just the run game, but their entire offense. They couldn't pass to save their lives the whole game, but the run game, they stopped that. They nipped that in the bud early in that game, and that's why we stayed in that game so long to give ourselves a chance to get back into it because we had two turnovers and somehow still were able to win that game. You had two fumbles, especially the A.J. Brown fumble near the end of the game that almost cost us, but they came back and they were able to get it done. Now, you look at some of the individual stats, and some of the guys that stuck out to me, obviously, Jalen Hurts, really big game, passed well, 18 for 25, a buck 90, one touchdown, uh, Q, QB rating of 107.1, and then on the ground, dog, the ground, he ran the ball 16 times, bro. He, he had the most rushes for the Eagles offense. Miles Sanders came in at 13 carries. And then after that, it was Boston Scott with three, and then Kenneth Gainwell. Because when I was watching this game, I was screaming through the screen, run the football. You have a team that is playing a – they're playing a lot of zone, a lot of cover three, and they're saying, you're not going to beat us over the top. Go ahead and dink and dunk down the field. And if you can do that perfectly for – 10, 12, 15 plays, and you get a touchdown or field goal, fine. We'll live with that. But we're not going to let you blow the top off our defense. So when you're playing a team like that, it's even more imperative for you to not only have cover three beaters, right, and zone beaters, but you have to run the ball. Bring those safeties and those linebackers into the box so then you can make them bite on play action. That's the only way you're going to open up that shell. The way that the Colts play defense is – the equivalent to a boxer that is not really doing a lot offensively. He doesn't really have a good jab or hook. He's not going to hurt you. And he's really not in there to win per se, but he keeps his hands up high and he gets on his bicycle and runs around the ring. Now, are you going to beat that guy? Can you beat that guy? Sure, you'll beat that guy. But it's going to be very, very difficult to beat him by knocking him out. No matter, even if it's a bad boxer, it's going to be hard to knock somebody out when they don't want to get knocked out. If they're running or shelling up, and they're it, they're going to be hard to knock out. Uh, a fight for reference, if you want to check this out, is Joshua Clady versus Manny Pacquiao some years ago. Clady, great fighter, but the style compared to Manny's style, it it was an ugly fight because Clady his mo is to shell up, catch punches, and throw back, catch and shoot. But that's kind of hard to do when you got a guy like Manny Pacquiao who's throwing five, six, ten punch combinations. Now, did they all get through and land? No, but he kept throwing them with such persistence that Clyde had to stay shelled up. And then as a result, Clyde didn't want to open up. So even though he wasn't going to be offensive and walk forward and beat Pacquiao, he also was not going to get knocked out because he's going to stay shelled up. He wasn't going to win, but you, Manny Pacquiao would have been lucky to knock that guy out because he didn't want to get knocked out okay so that's kind of how this game was with the Colts you have to know that that's the way they're going to play their defense so you have to come out and establish the run and stick with it not get freaked out when you have one rush for a yard here or 
a rush for two yards there. No, you have to come back and you have to stay committed to it. Because trust and believe the Colts were staying committed to their run game for sure. Which brings me to my point why they only had 99 yards because of the big signings earlier this week of Ndamukong Su and Linval Joseph. They came in and they had an immediate impact. Not on the first drive, but you saw it from that drive onward through the rest of the game. They could not run up the middle. It was clogged up. They were getting off their blocks. They were shedding the guards. They were really causing havoc in the A-gap. And <laughs> Jonathan Taylor had nowhere to run. Nowhere to run. The past five weeks, the Eagles have given up at least 124 yards on the ground, even in their wins, including the commander's loss. So this was one of the first weeks where they gave up under 100 yards rushing. And he looked really good doing it. So that was a key for them not only to win the game, but to stay in it long enough for their offense to be able to make some plays to win it. That rush defense. Very, very highly impressed with those signings, and they made an impact already. And they managed their time very well. I want to talk about that. Because last week, you had Fletcher Cox with 70 snaps, which is just insane. You should not be given any D-tackle that many snaps, especially a guy that's older, too. So you look at the, the snap breakdown here, and I have it right here in front of me. Where, where we at? Where we at? No, you can never find things when you need them, right? Okay, so, so on the defense. So the secondary, they played 100% of the snaps, 65 plays in all for the defense. TJ Edwards played 97% of the snaps. Kaiser White, 86% of the snaps. And then you look at Fletcher Cox. He played 48 snaps. Still a little bit high for my liking, but he played 75% of the snaps. Linval Joseph played 40% of the snaps, and that was 26 plays. And then Damakon Su played 17 snaps, 26% of the snaps. And even only playing 26 and 40% of the snaps, respectively, for Su and Joseph, they were still able to make a big impact because they put them in on those obvious rushing downs. And they were able to say, no, we're going to stop you here. We're going to put you into second and third and long, and you're going to have to beat us. And anybody with two eyes in the brain can can tell that the Colts, they struggled just getting off the bus to go into the field, let alone be able to throw a pass and complete it consistently. They have no weapons. Michael Pittman, cool, but they don't really have any weapons. They don't have any threats. All, all they have is Jonathan Taylor, and that's it. Matt Ryan, he's all right, but it's almost time. You know, the light's getting low. So what, what were they really going to do? So once we stopped that run game, they were able to give themselves a chance to get back in that game. Which brings me back to my point. They were getting stalled out in the first half. But in that second half, they committed more to the run like I was screaming through the TV for them to do. And he started really breaking off big runs. And Jalen Hurts put the game on his shoulders. And he had that big rush at the end of the game, which is what I would call a, let's say, a pass run option play. Where you have Boston Scott running... A route straight up the middle of the field. You have a tight end doing a short out. And then Jalen Hurts is getting the snap and then he's reading, okay, is anybody open? If if nobody's being if everybody's being covered, I'm going to tuck the ball and run it, which is what he did. Because a few games ago, if you remember, they ran a similar play and he tucked it and started running and then stopped and then flipped it to Goddard, Goddard in the end zone for a touchdown. A similar play. Right, So I think that was a very, very, you know where your bread is buttered at. If he's been, been killing these guys on the ground with his legs, come up with a play where he has options to pass, even though it's quote-unquote a possible designed QB draw. Right, So very, very good, good play call there. And they were able to overcome a lot of the mishaps they had early in the game. And I think that's a sign of a very, very good team. When you don't bring your best, when you don't bring your best, can you find a way to win? When you don't bring your best, can you find a way to win? And they showed that. Now you have a game like the Vikings and the Cowboys yesterday where the Cowboys just blew the doors off the Vikings. Okay, they did what they're supposed to do. Their defense came out and dominated and made Kirk Cousins look like Kirk Cousins. But the Eagles came out, their defense made Matt Ryan look like Matt Ryan, but their offense did not show up for a huge portion of that game. But when it mattered most, they were able to find mismatches that were going to benefit them and come out and exploit them. 
and he finally, like I said, got back to the run and made it happen. So, you know, great, great job there. So, you know, we were nine and one. They found a way to get the dub. That run defense, that was one thing I said they had to shore up, and they addressed that in a big way this past Sunday. Secondly, I think you saw a lot of this show up in this game. Jack Stoll, cool tight end, but the absence of Dallas Goddard was painfully apparent. They did not have that threat in the middle of the field, so they were able to put the Stephon Gilmore on A.J. Brown. Devontae Smith, he got his here and there against face on. I mean, and, and uh other dude, can't remember his name. They couldn't cover him, but they were like, okay, we'll, we'll let Devontae Smith get his, but once we get into the red zone, we're going to tighten up and and use the the um, back pylon as the 12th man. But we're not going to let A.J. Brown beat us, and there's nobody we have to worry about at tight end over the middle of the field. So they're definitely going to need him back as soon as possible. Maybe he's out another four weeks. I don't know. But hopefully he is back sooner than later. And then lastly, you have to wonder, <clears throat> looking at the, the play calling, are they going to get back to running the ball earlier in the game as opposed to doing it later? Why get behind the eight ball, especially against a bad team on the road when you can just start out running the ball earlier? And my last point would be, why is Miles Sanders not getting more touches? I don't know what what it is. I don't know what it is. He's getting a lot of a decent amount of snaps. I mean, he plays 65% of the snaps. Okay, cool. I'd rather see 70%, but whatever. Why does he only have 13 carries in, in a game where he was rushing pretty well? I like the things he was doing when he got the rock. I mean, he ran 13 times, 47 yards, or 3.6 yards per carry. But a lot of those short runs were earlier in the game, in the first and second quarter. In that second half, he was starting to rattle off runs. So why not give him the ball? Why, why does he not have 18 carries? You look at Jonathan Taylor, 22 carries, 84 yards. They're giving him the rock. Why are you not giving Miles Sanders the rock? Don't know. If you're worried about his durability, then that's all the more reason to go into my next point, which would be to look into picking up Melvin Gordon just got waived by the Denver Broncos after they collapsed, thankfully, against my, my Raiders. We fought, <laughs> The Raiders finally won a game in, I, I can't remember how long, but they had a, a collapse against the Raiders, and he's been having some fumbling issues this year. He had a fumble uh, yesterday, I think maybe at the goal line or whatnot, and they cut him, right? But Melvin Gordon, one, he's splitting – playing time with Javon Williams, I believe that's his name, at running back. He's not getting a lot of wear and tear, but that also is a team that is very down on their luck. They, they're they not good. Russell Wilson is using uh, hand signals and 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 word signals from, from the freaking Seahawks. It's like he didn't – it's like he doesn't remember he's playing for the Denver Broncos now. For whatever reason, they're bad, man. The team sucks, even though they have weapons. They just suck. So they, they've been able to load the box because they know they can't pass. So they load the box, and Javon Williams and Melvin Gordon don't have any space to breathe. So the fact that he's getting under four yards per carry, I get that. But last year, when he actually had a competent quarterback, he was getting 4.5 yards per carry. He looked very lively. He looked like he had a lot of tread left on the tires. And he still does, honestly. So that would be a guy I'm looking into if I'm the Eagles immediately. So I think there's a lot of teams that wanted a running back going leading up to the trade deadline that weren't able to get one that are going to be looking to swoop in and get Melvin Gordon. So we got a comment here from a cockroach fan. Um, salute. Okay, I salute you back, sir. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, you guys got your dub. But, yeah, I would be immediately on the phone with his agent looking to sign Melvin Gordon because – he, I think he gives you another guy who can take some of the carries away from Miles Sanders if you want to keep Miles Sanders fresh. And he's a good blocker on pass downs, and he catches the ball well. I still remember Melvin Gordon from the Chargers when he was just a superstar. And even with the Broncos the past two or three years, not this year, he's been very, very productive when the team hasn't been an absolute shit show. So I think that that would be a very good pickup for the Eagles. Going to be relatively cheap, affordable compared to what you would have had to give up to get Kamara or 
Christian McCaffrey. I think that's the move that needs to be made. I mean, you already made a move to shore up the run defense with two veterans that, I mean, it's looking like it's paying dividends already. So why not look into Melvin Gordon at an affordable price? A guy who, like I said, I think he still has a lot of juice left in the tank. Go ahead, talk to the man. So that, that's what I would do. Let me know what you guys think about that. Let me know what you guys think about that. Because when he went to the Broncos, he signed a, a one-year deal worth $2.5 million after spending the last two, two years in Denver. And uh, he got a new deal and they cut him already. So, I, look, I think he'd be a, a great addition. And I, I want to see them address that weak spot in, in their, their game. So let me know what you guys think about that. We have the Packers coming up. We are favored by 12 points, I believe, uh, on, on the money lines. That That's going to be changing throughout the week. But the fact that they're favored by a touchdown, they see the Packers. They see the Eagles. The Packers have been having a little bit of a resurgence, even though they struggle in this past game. But I think that they're more tailor-made for the Eagles for a couple of reasons that I'll talk about in my next video. I'll, I'll, I'll give a breakdown video of this Packers and Eagles game coming up. But, yeah, I think that the Eagles are going to be in a better spot, ironically, against the Packers than they were against the Colts. But that that's it for now. Uh, let me know your thoughts, and I'll holler at y'all on the next live stream. Go Birds. Peace.